back. Well guys, I got the uh, Kenwood TS-130 there about a month ago, I suppose. Traded it for the uh, Yezu 767s. And uh, this one has trouble with the LED display, the fluorescent display. And, uh, well anyway, the radio is on, as you can tell. I don't know if you can see the light or not, but anyway, she's lit up. But, let's play. So I was perusing her, seeing if there were any loose connections and such inside. And uh, no matter what I did, it didn't seem to make any difference. Uh, I didn't see, I didn't see anything, you know, wires off or broken or connectors loose or anything like that. But, um, so... Okay, I may have figured out it might have been the PLL board, so I took a look at that, everything seemed to be fine. And then I took the took this board up off it, she used like an inch sort of thing, you can take this up. And then I looked at the display board, which is here. And um, basically, I pressed on the board, pushed back on the connectors here, everything's fine. Anyways, I reseated this chassis back here again, that literally again, this piece is metal aluminum all this comes up and uh, anyways I put it back in and it just so happens that there's actually a loose connection on this board right here because if I press anywhere here in this corner the display comes back on so there's a broken connection now some people may think okay there's capacitance coupling or whatever between your finger and the board well okay will eliminate that possibility by using a screwdriver. So, no. It's got nothing to do with capacitance at all. But there appears to be a broken connection on the board. Either a broken trace or a broken solder joint. But it's uh, on this part of the board. This unit, I guess you want to call it. So, Looks like I'm going to have to remove this one again and possibly, quite possibly, re-solder that entire circuit board because it's like I say, it's either a broken trace or a broken solder joint, one or the other. So, I'm going to peel her up, peel her off and see. But as you can see, pressing on this transformer Pressing on capacitors, you know, on the resistor, the front doesn't do nothing, but this part here that actually flexes a bit, I don't know if you can see it going down here a bit, but yeah, so it's over there. Anyways, uh, if you're interested in seeing the repair of a TS-130S, stand by. I will be right back with you, and let's see if we get this beastie back on the go again. All best. All right, so I got the board up. And I'm pressing down on that transformer again. So there's definitely a broken trace here somewhere. I push back up on the board from the bottom, and there's nothing. So it's only when I'm pressing down. That's pressing down. That's pressing up. Pressing down. Pressing up. So, turn the radio off here. And uh, reset our few setter joints. Let's see if I figure out which joint is what is bad. And I figure out which is which. I'll. Uh, show you. Anyways, stay tuned. Okay, let's report out. Right now we're looking at uh, transistor, uh, what do you call it, Q2. Turn some light here so you can actually see this thing. There we go. So this 
So you get Q2 down there. It's a 5 volt regulator. In ground 6 volt. Then you have another transistor here, Q3. Um, and as you notice, I was pressing down on this transformer, and you're getting power. I notice on the board, back at this side on that 5 volt regulator, that the circuit board here has actually been damaged. How that's been damaged is beyond me. But uh, yeah, that is the bottom of the 6 volt reg or 5 volt regulator. regulator. So what I'm going to do, I'm thinking the traces are probably damaged. So actually, if you look real close, let's see how close I can get to you here. To this pin on the right. Oh. Come on, baby. Focus. I don't know if you see that little line that's there. Looks to the, to the green uh, enamel that got taken off, but you can see what looks to be a break in the circuit board there, in the track, in the trace. It looks to be a break. So what I'm going to do, and what I've decided to do, is uh, remove some of the enamel. This is green stuff. Remove the enamel over it a little bit, and I'm going to bring the solder joint over to here. And see if they fixed the problem. I'm also going to build up on the on two, two pins as well. Because obviously the board has been damaged here. And while I'm at it, this one over here don't look to be that hot either. So I'm probably going to re-solder this one too, especially this joint right there. So looks like some liquid got into the radio here and damage that solder connection by the looks of it. So we're going to redo that one as well. But anyways, let's get her done, put her back together, and see what, see what she got to say for herself. But as she, uh, right now, I've got the board removed. This cable, coax connector, was soldered to the bottom of that board. Um, don't know what this is. I don't know if this is some kind of a modification but I'm pretty sure it's not a factory uh, install for sure. Anyways, keep me updated. So let's get this soldered, put her in the radio, and see if uh, this fixes it or not. Fingers crossed, I would think. Hey guys, I got the board put back in. I just had it all out and resoldered. Took a bunch of pictures of the soldering process I've done here. So basically, what I've done, I've resoldered the pins going to. Uh, Q3, resoldered them, added a little bit of extra connection to the rest of the traces that was there, as well as on to Q2, it's a 5 volt regulator. The circuit board was actually damaged next to that, so I reflowed the solder on that, on that uh, regulator, as well as beefed up the solder connection. So now, let's turn on the radio and see what happens. Be the first to see a TS-130 come back to life once again. There we go. There we go. Now I can press, should be able to press on this board now and nothing should happen. There we go. One TS-130, nice and happy again. Gotta like it. Anyway, let's put her back together. See if we can make a contact to put in this video. So, uh, anyways, so if you got a TS-130, yes, that uh, display don't want to work. Yeah, well, start with this board first. <laughs> uh, reset our connections on this regulator and on this transistor. And if these two don't bring it back, then continue soldering some more joints. But uh, to see if she fails again, I'll let you know. But uh, this should fix the problem permanently. Fingers crossed. <laughs> and there she be.
energies. Thanks for watching, and I'm sure there'll be more videos on the Kenwood TS-130S as time goes on. <clears throat> I'm sure I haven't heard the last of the problems for this radio, but you never know. Anyways, 7-3.